Okay, uh, so today, uh, this is going to be our day nine of Google Cloud Fundamentals training. The topic that we are going to cover today are, or is Google Cloud Security Services. So we are going to uh, walk through the introduction of GCP uh, security services. In that, uh, we obviously have to cover what is IAM, Access and Identity Management or Identity and Access man Management. Right? Then uh, we'll be talking about the Google Cloud Resource Manager cloud infrastructure security, data security, and at the last, uh, we'll be talking about the audit logging and monitoring. So basically when we talk about the, we are going to talk about the audit logging and monitoring. So we will look into security command center. That is like one place, uh, one uh, shop, all all uh, security and uh, uh, monitoring, or logging or the monitoring, all the aspects are covered all together at one place, right? So it's a UI which uh, talks about uh, how, uh, how your uh, security reports uh, look like for now. All right, so let's move ahead. Okay, so uh, as we start with the cloud security as the introduction, do you recall the very first uh, graphics on the left side? On the left hand side, do you remember what is it? Or if if anyone wants to uh, talk about it. No one. Is it readable? We remember security, I mean the shared responsibility model. I'm not getting any response. So it seems like uh, I'm not audible to you all. The no. picture is not uh, so clear. I am not seeing. Okay. Fine, so that is a response. So let's uh, check it on um, a better uh, screen. Okay, so fine. Let me see around there for screen there. How about now? Can you read it? If not, let me resize it. And I believe you can read it now. Can you? Okay, uh, yeah, so the very first, yeah. yes, so the very first component that we are going to discuss is as part of the uh, Google Cloud security aspect. So the very first is the shared responsibility model. And remember, I told that this is very important because this one uh, particular uh, part of this uh, slide uh, where you see how the services are, I mean, what are your responsibility and what is the customer, I mean, uh, the cloud provider's responsibility, right? So here we have already covered it very uh, deep, I mean, in depth, what is the uh, shared responsibility model and uh, how it uh, makes a difference. And I'm going to touch base it a bit uh, here. So if you see the uh, the bar chart or the uh, the the uh, bars which are in blue color and the yellow right the part of it is in yellow if you see they have a uh, different uh, meanings here right so when you are on premises everything becomes the customer responsibility but as you move to the cloud now cloud uh, vendor the provider is going to share those responsibilities with you right so they are going to take part as you are uh, i mean as per the kind of uh, migration model you approach with so here again, it's the IS, PaaS, and SaaS infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and what is the last one? Software as a service. Software as service. Yeah. Okay. So if you see, we are going to own less and less responsibility as we are maturing in the model, like as we are going from infrastructure as a uh, service to the serverless model. That is the software as a service. So if you have uh, already understood this part the rest of the uh, the security uh, coverage will be uh, very clear to you right because here it is not only talking from the perspective of uh, how the responsibilities are shared but what sort of responsibilities we are sharing right so if you are able to let me increase the size a bit more okay so now if you see 
as we are opting for from the cloud perspective when we are opting for ies infrastructure as a service now the cloud audit logging networking storage and encryption is everything becomes cloud uh, providers responsibility right which we are going to see in the upcoming uh, slides where we talk about how the data security is ensured how we are ensuring the network security the audit logging part right so all of that becomes the cloud providers uh, uh, responsibility to take care of and similar to that when you move into the platform as a service now even the security the guest OS data and their content the access and uh, authentication which is part of uh, iam that also becomes the uh, responsibility for the cloud provider okay even the identity and operations okay then uh, as you move further uh, to the serverless model where you have the software as a service model now the uh, web application security also becomes the responsibility of the cloud provider so as we are moving from is to pass or uh, less managed services to the uh, the completely managed service right the security uh, that we have to take care of the customer has to take care of it is becomes less and less right and that's uh, that is also some sort of uh, you can say uh, a better opportunity for the customer to be able to uh, focus more on what they really need mm -hmm. instead of focusing on the security do they have to still uh, know what what sort of security the provider uh, the cloud provider is uh, having so that we can ensure our uh, application our data everything uh, becomes uh, remains secure all the time whenever we are uh, processing our uh, information right so that is about the share uh, the shared responsibility model once again which is very important and obviously it is very important from the cloud security perspective okay now, if that is uh, again refreshed to you, let's move to the next uh, portion where we are going to touch base on the identity and man uh, access management. So from the identity and access management, we have another dedicated slide I and mean, two uh, different slides are there, which will talk about how the identity and access management works. Right? Uh, apart from that, also, we have to secure the endpoints that we create. So uh, whenever there is a patch update uh, has to be done for the endpoints when we want to uh, perform any kind of device management like a Suppose um, you you are working on this uh, uh, some of the application which is uh, enabling access to any device uh, a remote device maybe it can be a Android device or or maybe another operating system right so you do get uh, you have to first of all uh, secure those uh, endpoints uh, for that also we can actually set up a set of policies which will ensure that if they are meeting this compliance this uh, set of uh, uh, requirements then only the access to, uh, should be provided also we can have a different layers of uh, securing it like we can say that you can set up a two uh, step uh, authentication for it two step verification and with that we try to secure our environment right now so this is first of all you get the access um, or uh, ex uh, you get the access sorted for any of the users okay once the access is sorted then we come about uh, the other aspect of the security because whoever is going to access to uh, information uh, first of all we need to uh, set their context like uh, how the authentication is done how the authorization is provided to them right so that has to be sorted first right so later we move to the data security application security then software supply chain security we need to uh, ensure and also there are uh, securities at each level like we are going to see for infrastructure for network right okay all these sort of things uh, we want to have a, a dedicated view a dashboard where we can visualize if there is any sort of breach or any sort of concern or if there are any recommendations okay i need to be securing this uh, part of the security either it can be the access or the data or the application or any network security right so that view we can have when we use a security command center okay so the last part of this graph where we see security monitoring and operations so this talks about the security i mean uh, 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 how you are able to uh, view what sort of security concerns are there and how you are going to deal with it. So security monitoring and operations uh, are mostly handled with the security command center. Okay. Fine. And also we need to ensure that as I, I was talking about, so we need to ensure all sort of this governance and risk compliance are there. So we, whenever this uh, access is provided to any devices here, okay, the endpoints uh, uh, whichever we are exposing to, either it is a Chrome device or maybe operating system of Windows on Mac, whatever we are using, right? 
So whenever they try to access any of these environments, even the Google Cloud Console environment, whenever they try to access, we want to ensure that uh, they are authenticated with uh, ED, so Active Directory, uh, if it, it is controlled by that, or we are going to control it with the uh, Google Workspace Space itself. So admin will have the access and they are going to control it, uh, what sort of access they will have, what all services they can use. Uh, I, I can even enable them, okay, they can access the Google Cloud Console but they cannot have uh, the Gmail enabled for it. So they cannot ever use the same ID for writing mails to anyone, right? So that all sort of security and that sort of, sort of uh, uh, setup can be done. Uh, and it is a part of the security of the cloud, right? So there are two components actually, if you see. One is called uh, security in the cloud and security of the cloud, right? So here we are covering mostly on the security in the cloud. Security of the cloud is like a, when we have a talk about the physical security of it right okay okay so this is a more uh, high level on the security as an introduction right Se uh, cloud security introduction now let's move into a separate slide a new slide where we will look further into okay so let's see what else we want to see here okay let me move to the slides So uh, what we are discussing now, so next we are going to look into uh, access management. So identity and access management. But before I jump into that, I would like to give you an overview of Google Cloud Resource Manager. Okay. So let me take you to a different slide. Is it visible to you? Are you able to see it? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. okay, that's very important for me. Now, this particular uh, uh, diagram where I'm showing, so this is about the resource management. Okay, how the resources are created on the Google Cloud platform, right? On the very high level, how the architecture looks like. So this also matters for uh, the landing page. I mean, whenever we are creating the landing zone on the Google Cloud Platform. So this is a, a, a typical structure that we follow. So as you are currently using your free account, you don't have the privilege to create a folder for yourself. Okay? This folder you cannot create. Okay? This folder cannot be created. But you are you have already directly created a project here. Right? So in general, whenever we are working in the enterprises, okay? whenever we are working with any organizations, so we will have a organization setup right so this organization is nothing but a domain with which you have registered your uh, i mean registered to this google cloud environment right so you will be tagging your domain like www.example.com right so that becomes your organization now within that organization either you can go and create directly a project or you can have a segregation of different departments by use creating a folder here so any organization will have multiple departments. So that departments, I'm going to create a folder for them. So individual, uh, I mean, within uh, that, I can have multiple folders. Like uh, I can have a, a, a folder for the, you can say for the HR team, for the development team, I can keep a different folder. Then for the finances team, I can have a different folder, right? So like that, I can have a different set of folders. Okay? So that you can easily identify who is accessing what resource, even we can control how they access it. So uh, in, during the IAM part, we are going to discuss that, how it is applied. But for now, just understand that an uh, organizational setup, we will have the company uh, domain. Within the domain, we are going to... Okay. So uh, within the organization, we are going to create folders based on what department we want to create. Now within the department also, we can have different teams set up. Depends. If we have a different teams within the department, like in the the development team i can have a development for the front end i can have a development for the back end right so that that way i can se separate the developments now then 
again within the uh, this uh, teams like the front end the back end team i can be having uh, this aggregation based on different products they are working on so someone is working on a machine learning project we can have a different uh, a folder created for them right and someone working on another aspect of it we can have a different folder for it so similar to that we can have a hierarchy of different different folders or i can keep on moving them uh, like uh, as i want okay now once i have my folder set up then i will be creating projects within those folders like i will have uh, for for example in this particular scenario you can see so i have product 1 now for the product one i am going to create a project okay the project can be at three different level right so one product and for that i will have three different projects now these projects are in this case are created based on the environment right so here i have created the project based on the environment for which i want to work with so i have three projects here one is for the development another one for the staging area or the pro or test project right and there will be one more for the production okay so that is how i am going to have a different set of projects right now so i got this uh, hierarchy where i am starting with our organization i got different set of folders and folders to that right and within the folder i will be creating a project now within the project you all have tried out you are creating resources like you created a computing engine instance you created a cloud pub sub you created a cloud storage buckets as well right so all of that you are creating within a project okay now there is a sur surprising thing that cloud storage buckets can be created even outside of a project which is the, which you can actually figure it out uh, just make it uh, as a note okay but apart from that what i want to highlight is the resources are actually created within a project and they are also built at the project level now here if you see this hierarchy if you have uh, the clarity now one more thing that i want to highlight is the billing is enabled at individual projects okay voice is not coming jitendra no i am not talking okay okay so billing is created uh, or tagged to individual projects and that is how the costing is done okay on high level on this particular uh, uh, diagram if you see only billing part was not uh, shown so which i have highlighted now but apart from this so any uh, time if you are working with any of the organization setup where you need to migrate or you need to start a new project on the gcp platform you need to have the organization as the first node or the root node and from there you will have the bifurcation bifurcation for the different folders which are based on different criteria it can be based on the department can be also within that department you can have different teams or the product like that you can have uh, your own set of uh, uh, folders created even if you miss it uh, during the initial creation of it you can actually create it later and move your projects into those folders later on okay now if this particular uh, diagram is clear to you or if you have any questions please ask now before i move to the next slide because okay. now uh, you need to relate the i am uh, based on this okay one i will explain this one whatever you have explained jitendra okay mm -hmm. this is the company okay inside that we need to create the folder as per enterprise level it is happening correct mm -hmm. okay in that we can create three department or, or three folders we will create like that right depends on your requirement yes okay okay so suppose that three folders we will create it and that name will be department wise correct yes department abc we can put like that right okay and every department maybe one team or two team maybe depends on requirement two teams mm -hmm. will work in that two mm -hmm. teams maybe two type of product or two types of software they are developing or whatever the project is there on that they will create and what do you mean by product on that two types of resources they are they are using or what product can you explain that one are you listening jitendra jitendra lost i think gone hello hello jitendra yes raju i i missed you yes uh, now i'm back here yeah. okay so uh, from the starting i will tell okay this is a company three department i have created on that three department mm -hmm. of three folders anything could be same would be there correct right 
okay inside any folder or department we can put uh, depends on requirement to team a or team b two, two teams are there and every team two products are there it means what do you mean by product here in the terms of two types of resources or two different projects they are doing what do you mean by that is product okay see that is a very much a hypothetical scenario okay, okay. now one thing is it can be anything tell an example that then that will be clear for me right so what i'm saying this product can be anything now the product when i say suppose someone is working on developing a product which is ai based okay someone is working on creating a product which is basically for uh, based on a uh, gke or the kubernetes okay. someone working on creating a product based on their data right or okay. someone is working on creating a product which is very much on the infrastructure creation right so okay. this can be individual products that uh, someone is working on it is completely depend on the use case why use case right okay now, okay so only thing that you need to have the clarity is that this is how the folders are created okay now okay. folders are only a mean to uh, segregate these uh, the iam permissions that you are going to set up how the manage uh, management is done for different set of departments okay so that we can easily able to assign them roles based on their requirement right okay. because whenever we are going to look next for the iam permissions that will also cover about uh, how we are assigning it at the folder level or at the organization level but mostly they are assigned at the project level right yeah. okay so after this, that yeah. uh, three projects will be there in every product okay. no no that's what i'm saying this nothing is mandatory in this whole structure okay so we can change as per the company scenario or right. project requirement right so so in short what you were trying to say is that uh, iam can control any part of uh, Right. the project uh, architecture or project folders that uh, who can have the permission and who cannot have the permissions right yes yes, yes. yeah okay. but that's, yeah. that's what i wanted to uh, put forward before i talk about the iams right so sure. anyone anyone else got any kind of uh, different thought process want to discuss so uh, my thought is mm-hmm. any project goes through three phases like development testing and production is that uh, what you are referring here like the projects related to development testing in general in general mostly we see that okay but we can have a different scenario as well like uh, so this is very much a, a standard practice where we see that based on the environment like uh, i i am going to have multiple environments based on that i am uh, creating uh, multiple projects here right but what if uh, i i have just a requirement that i want to test out something okay just a kind of a sandbox right so i don't need everything i i will just create a project in development like i can have a a, a sandbox named with my own name okay and then i'm done with uh, creating that one project i don't need everything here okay so that that is very much flexible based on my uh, current requirement yes yes also i can have a, a shared services project also so if, if you see here i'm uh, talking about one product uh, specific like if i have a product and based on that i'm going to create this architecture so i will be creating a a, a different Uh, a project for the development then test for, and then for production but what if um, i'm going to have uh, okay apart from this not what if but apart from this also i will have a, another project where i'm going to keep only a set of components like uh, the the one which is required only for the development uh, of uh, ci cd pipelines right so i can have a separate project only for keeping all of the requirements for the creation of a ci cd pipeline and deploy it at individual projects maybe for the development or test or production whatever but i will have a dedicated project only which will control the other projects for the de- uh, development perspective then i can have another separate project which will look after the network uh, how the networks are created or the networks are assigned for all of these projects okay so i can have even different uh, shared services project also that those are called shared services project because they are sharing the services with our other project okay so but on very high level this is what you need to know and let's move forward and then get more clear, clarity okay uh, before that one question uh, mm-hmm. uh, jitender here there is something called test and production project right yes say for example i am a developer and uh, testing team will be there separately right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so Uh, is there any chance that only uh, the developers get uh, the permissions to development project and testing team for test project or production for operations team is that yes. works that way yes uh, that's very valid question and uh, that is what happens so the development team will have only access to the development project okay 
which is controlled mm-hmm. through the IAM permissions. Okay. okay. Similar to that, when I talk about the test project, or you can also consider it as a system testing project or the staging project, right? Mm-hmm. So they are not, uh, nothing different but the same. Now the staging environment again, uh, the tester will have the permissions. but the development team are assigned certain permissions which is required to perform certain tasks when whenever they are going to support the testing team right and then production yes. is very limited no one is allowed to touch unless uh, there is a someone who is actually reviewed the changes and they are allowing the changes to be deployed that's very uh, pretty much a standard procedure that we follow whether it is uh, on the cloud or not cloud so those things can be controlled at each and every level yes let's see uh, in the upcoming uh, slides okay sure sure So let me move forward. Give me a second. Right. Okay, so so far we discussed about the introduction to cloud security. Then we understood the resource hierarchy, how the resources are created on the JSP platform. Now let's see how we are uh, controlling the access to these resources, right? So we want to have proper set of uh, authentication and authorization in place, so uh, so that uh, the any of the resources uh, being accessed by a user, a real user, or the machine user is uh, having the right set of controls in place. Okay, so that no one can have everything uh, or access to everything, and then they go and uh, try to work with it. So that that is not going to happen, right? That's very much uh, what we need to know as part of the security. Okay, so now let's talk about this identity and access management. And the very first part, there are two steps in the identity and access management. So first of all, we will need to ident- I mean, uh, identify the user. Okay, so we need to authenticate the user. okay and then we are going to authorize it to perform any task right uh, did we get the uh, the understanding of what does it mean by authentication and what is mean by authorization what is uh, authentication yes authentication means when we uh, log in we get uh, that uh, 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 multi factor authentication like uh, we get that message authentication mm-hmm. is that right Mm-hmm. Authorization yes, exactly. is something. Uh, uh, on the other day, when we were trying to access something and we didn't uh, get that uh, uh, access, mm-hmm. and we uh, gone to that admin, we grant that admin permission, and later we were able to access it. Right. Uh, okay. That uh, was... I'm not able to tell that exact name, but uh, is that the one? Yes, sir. You have understood that very clear. Very okay. clear. You understood that part, and that is what I'm highlighting here. If you... everyone have got uh, that clarity now i think i can even skip this slide see what it means is really first of all you need to confirm the identity of any person or any machine id whoever is going to access it so i need to authenticate whether it is the person who he is telling right so you need to authenticate yourself first and once you have authenticated okay i am uh, having this sort of uh, uh, identity and this is what i am okay now let me see if i can authorize this resource like similar to that we can see uh, someone walking into only the development uh, of any application okay once the person needs to identify that you are a developer right so that is handled by the cloud identity cloud identity is a resource or you can say uh, a service on jsp platform which will uh, have all this uh, details of a user okay what uh, the user is uh, how i mean their uh, even the the personal uh, i mean the, the profiling right their name their contact details or email id like that right everything will be stored like you know uh, the ad active directory similar to that uh, gcp we have the cloud identity right so here you are actually uh, going to authenticate the user whether whatever you are saying you are okay uh, i need to uh, verify that and for that verification i am going to use multiple tools okay so if you can see here yeah so if you see i'm uh, going to uh, authenticate the user using the cloud identity tool right 
I can do it using a manual process or using the API or I can even upload a CSV file of that identities. Okay, this is the user having this uh, content details, having this uh, set of, uh, 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 you can say, privileges, right? So I, I'm going to uh, have that uh, updated in the cloud identity service. Now, once it is uploaded to the cloud identity service or when it is, uh, uh, I mean, uh, up, I mean, it is reflecting on the cloud identity tool. Now, next, what it is going to happen? So you will either have the individual users or you can combine those users in a group, like a group for the development team. Okay. Or even I can create a unit organizations, right? So organizational unit, again, that is somewhere aligning with the AWS concept as well. But even the organizational units has a different set of requirements because I want to have a small organization set up within that uh, bigger organization and I can assign the, uh, the, the set of permissions to them. But and that, that is very much on a high level. But what if I want to pick point few people from one organization, few people from some other organization like that, I can have multiple, uh, I mean, people from multiple organizations. They want to work together on one particular project, right? So in that case, I'm going to create a group and add them into that group. They will still be part of that organization. Like you, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you must be coming from a development team, then another person from testing team. Okay. Having certain skill set then someone from the project management, right? Now, these people are actually at different layers, at different organization, okay? Or I'm hiring someone as a contract employee also. So now, whenever I'm hiring them, that becomes uh, part of another organization, not from my organization directly, right? So whenever I need to have that level of control, that uh, kind of uh, granularity, I'm going to have them uh, assigned into different organizational units. Then the groups are only created for a specific set of uh, people where they want to group together and work on certain tasks. If that is clear to you, now, once that setup is done, now then I'm going to assign them permissions because my authentication is done. I have identified them. I have added them into individuals. Uh, I mean, made them as a individuals or the groups or organizational units. Voice drop, Jitendra. Jitendra, your voice is dropped. I think he'll join back. Okay. Jitendra, you're on mute or I think uh, you're unable to hear. Yeah, Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. So how long I was not audible, like uh, a few minutes. Yeah. A few minutes. Okay. So last time when, uh, what did you hear? Cloud identity you were telling about. Okay. So I was talking about, uh, the cloud identity on the top. Okay. This one. Yes. Okay. Uh, Let's group go back. Of users. Okay. Fine. So let's uh, do that again. So I was talking about this cloud identity, right? Now with the cloud identity, once you have this users uploaded, right? So what you are doing is you are actually first uploading users to cloud identity. That is very first task. Fine. And once the users are uploaded, now you are going to either assign permissions to the user as an individual, like uh, if you have some admin roles for a user. So I'm going to give them just individual assignments and nothing more to that. Okay. But if I want to have uh, multiple users grouped together based on a specific project requirement, I'm going to collect them maybe uh, from different different departments and then uh, put them into a group. So I'm actually not moving the user here, but I'm creating a group. You must have worked with a uh, 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 Google group creation uh, if sometime if you have tried. So you are actually not moving the user. 
you are just creating a group and adding those people into that group so as an individual they are still present here right but they can also be existing in a group with certain given permissions for that group only right so now the user will have privilege with two things uh, individual permissions and also a group uh, permissions as well i will also have a organizational unit which is very much required if suppose i uh, i have a larger organization where i will have the different units for uh, the organization like uh, again if i talk from the hr uh, or the other different departments i have so there becomes a very much a uh, organizational unit so i have a unit a finance unit i will have the hr unit i have the development unit right so like uh, or even i can segregate based on the okay someone is uh, on premises completely that is a, a different organizational unit uh, the cloud one is cloud team is a different organizational unit <clears throat> so they will have a certain high level permissions assigned to them but whenever they are going to club together for a specific requirement then we will be keeping them also in a group so that they can perform uh, that duty and once that is done they will I, i will be able to close this group but organization permissions or the units will still be there right so our groups are something on very specific requirement otherwise you have a proper structuring for the organizational unit and as a individual permission now as long as the cloud identity is clear then very next step is that our identity is that like the cloud identity is performed now next step is i am going to assign permission to these users right whatever sort of the configuration is done either they are part of a group or organization unit that is a different uh, thing but once they have the identity set up i have authenticated them already with the help of a different uh, set of means okay um, i should be able to assign them permissions using the cloud i am cloud identity and access management okay and that is where i was talking about the other third party cloud identity provider now here we talked about the cloud identity provided by the google cloud okay that is their own product now the identity can uh, be provided by other uh, i mean the open source uh, platforms as well or maybe the other cloud as well right so there are ways to integrate them with the cloud identity like we can sync up whatever users are created whatever sort of uh, details they have i can use this tool this third party identity provider to authorize the user or authenticate the user on the cloud uh, on the gcp or the google cloud right so for that you can see the examples like we can authenticate or integrate with the active directory ldap then uh, legacy applications can be there or we can have the modern applications or the any open source applications uh, as well for uh, uh, using as a identity provider them uh, for them and then integrate with the cloud identity okay and there are different ways of authentication uh, as you know to sv that is uh, so what what can we call to sv here what is to sv get a verification message whenever you try to access any resources i mean if you had enabled so you will get an uh, immediate message saying that uh, your gmail was accessed on another device right or yes. you are trying to access it on the other device do you confirm it two yes. step two step yes yes two step verification right so that is another mean or mostly used now and highly recommended approach to secure your environment so even if someone has the password they cannot access your devices your resources if uh, they don't have your device uh, with you, uh, them right so for that there is a different way you can actually do it with the S, uh, sms uh, you can have a backup uh, codes which you have to se- keep secured okay even the better approach is the authenticator using the authenticator you can use the google authenticator here right then we can have a google prompt like a push, uh, mobile push you see that uh, you confirm on the mobile screen or they are saying they are giving you some numbers uh, to confirm which you uh, are getting whenever you are trying to access the resource so you have to enter there and then you do it and even the the best practices here is in security keys i mean you can have some devices which uh, keep on generating new numbers similar to you can say the authenticator okay but that will be uh, again uh, that is like a, a device dedicated to you you need to uh, is a hardware uh, uh, there right that can be used as security key uh, which you can enter uh, for accessing the resources so there are different means they have different uh, layers of uh, security which can be uh, like having a, a from incre- i mean less insured to the increased insured right so this is not very secure i mean anyone can uh, pass on the message and then they can try to use it or they can uh, uh, look into your messages and then try to get it right uh, but this uh, backup codes again if you if it is not uh, kept securely then it, uh, it is also not that good authenticator app is even better 
but again that can also be pissed right so we cannot rely much so, so the uh, recommended tracking from google side is the security key okay so these are different ways that we first open authenticate your user fine and then let's move on to the next uh, slide where it is about so you have authenticated now what is the next step what should be the next step now authorization authorization and why we need to do authorization because until unless we they will not got the authorization how they will perform any task mm -hmm. i will explain in a better way suppose that one room is there okay authentication it means you enter the gate but suppose right. that you need to go to the kitchen separate mm -hmm. door is there mm -hmm. okay so for that you need the authorization right that is true okay so okay. now let's uh, let's look into the authorization part So now let's look into the authorization. I hope it is uh, proper. Please tell no. So let me increase the size. Okay. So I hope you can see it now. So first of all, understand what is cloud identity. So it is nothing but a fine-grained access control and visibility for centrally. managing cloud resources so whenever it says centrally managing that is you can control it from the organization node to the folder to the project and at individual resources as well okay uh, rajiv if you recall uh, over the weekend when we were uh, doing the lab yes. so i had shared the uh, the various roles i mean understanding the roles uh, yes admin roles we have provided that one right yes okay so can you share it now in the chat what sir link yes okay let me check the link mm -hmm. okay now what i wanted to show here is this whenever you are working with iem identity and access management so it is again a a resource itself right which has the control from the uh, i mean at the organization level even to the folders and even at the uh, the resource as well and also we can uh, have it i mean the project and the resource as well so you can see here it talks about the iam rule it's a kind of a container right which holds the permissions or can manage the access for an organization a folder even a project okay and at the resource level okay so all these layers it can actually control the access now at the organization if you see what we have the domain as i talked about right so who can ha have the access at the domain level that is completely a organization uh, i mean owner or kind of a organizational admin kind of a person then we will have uh, permissions assigned at the user i mean at individual users or to the group or what is this svc account what is the machine id here during our lab uh, over the weekend we did this pop sub and we were facing some challenges what was that is that the service account service account right yes. so we also can assign permissions to the service account and we did that during the lab right yes and which is very important so when we cannot go and uh, do each and every task with that uh, user access we actually what to we create a machine account or the service account and assign the the same permission to the service account so that it can go and do the similar task on my behalf right now there can be a different set of roles assigned for individual i am uh, i mean individual roles can be assigned for a group uh, of roles can be assigned to the resources and as i said the typical organization level we have already discussed which is like organization admin can be there i can have a billing account admin which is uh controlling how the uh, the billings are done for individual project level right so this is talking about a uh, kind of some of the basic roles so there are different set of roles that uh, we will see at iam okay so i will have the uh, you can say the basic role i will have the predefined roles and there can be a custom role okay 
So the basic rule, if you are seeing here, I will have this uh, uh, organizational admin billing account admin, right? Even the organizational policy admin. So there is one called organizational policy admin. This is again a, a very interesting role and very uh, important role also because this particular admin, the organizational policy admin, will have control to let you either create uh, any of these services, any of the component, or if it uh, will let you create any public IPs or not. So it will. Ha it is very uh, powered uh, uh, role. Okay. So now the, it can control all set of scenarios, even when we talk about uh, creating any resources or controlling how the resource is accessed. So everything is done because it can create a policy and apply that at the organization node. And once, so, uh, you know, like um, at our home also, similar how we see. Uh, so the eldest one in the family will have the most power and then it will keep on reducing as we are going down, right? So similar to that, the IM roles from, uh, I mean, the, the permissions are also assigned and the similar way they are actually created. But altogether, it is going to be a combination of what the highest uh, role is having the uh, set of permission and what the lowest level uh, roles are uh, having the permission. So it will be combining both and not going to uh, to subtract it. Okay. So here I will have the organizational admin. Uh, I mean, they are very much uh, basic uh, permissions that we will have. Okay. There will be some of the uh, predefined roles, right? So when we say the predefined roles, like uh, I will have something, uh, if you see here, project creator. Now the project creator will have certain list of permissions. Okay. And uh, then uh, I have this uh, shared VPC admin as well. Okay. So these are some basic one. And then we also have some predefined one. Okay. But there is another category. Suppose something, uh, I mean, the set of permissions that we have already defined. Okay. If they are not fulling, uh, fulfilling uh, my requirement or if they are overpowered, I mean, suppose I'm going to uh, create a, uh, I mean, someone I'm going to assign uh, a permission for a project uh, or maybe a folder admin, any admin privilege I'm giving, right? Now I cannot go ahead and assign everyone a project uh, or the folder admin role. I just want someone to be able to create a folder, not to uh, edit or delete or anything, right? So if that is not fulfilled by a predefined role, I, I can certainly have a folder creator uh, role or I can have a folder creator role and also let it view the project uh, which is created in the folder but do not let it do anything else so if i want to combine multiples of predefined role or I, if i want to uh, create my own uh, certain specific set of permissions for uh, a role right so i'm going to create a custom role okay so uh, let me go back and try to simplify it a little more here so i got a user who got authenticated already right here i am going to assign it a im role im roles are nothing but a set of permissions combined together okay so whenever i am assigning someone as a role it will have certain privileges certain permissions to do something i i should be taking an example of this understanding rules for our slide right so give me a second Let me bring up that uh, particular slide. Or this, yeah. We will bring the transition here. Okay. So if you are able to see my screen here, this is about the basic and predefined rule references, and custom one is what you are going to create. The basic rules are nothing but the viewer, editor, and the owner rules. They are very primitive, okay? And they were created long back. And they have a lot many privileges based on what type of, uh, I mean, set of uh, permissions we are giving. So view, editor, or owner, right? Which you must have seen when you were working with the Google Drive documents, like Google Doc or anything. You will see, you will have the viewer or editor or the commenter kind of, okay? And even the owner. But when you're working with the cloud, we have already created a set of predefined rules which we know that, okay, based on the experience, this is going to be required. Now, I will take an example of the, okay, so which one we can take? Let's talk about Cloud SQL. Oh, I'm sorry, one second.
Okay. Now, if you see here, it says the Cloud SQL rules. Okay. Now, there are different rules. Cloud SQL admin. Now, the admin will have so many permissions. Okay. So, it has permissions to uh, create the resources or so it can actually create the uh, resource. You can create Cloud SQL instances, everything it can do. But I want to limit it or I want to give it only certain uh, 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 permissions only. So uh, instead of giving it a cloud admin role, because cloud admin is something like a, who's going to take care of all that cloud SQL part. But what if a developer wants to access the cloud SQL uh, resource? Okay. So I'm not going to give it a whole thing. I'm going to give it only a required permissions. Like I can give it a, let's see, cloud instance user or maybe cloud SQL viewer. I can give that, right? But what if there is a you can say a, a service account which wants to perform certain tasks by connecting to the cloud sql okay and then uh once work is done then uh, it is going to release the instance i mean it is not going to have any connectivity so i can assign it a cloud sql instance uh, permission which will only be connecting to the instance of the cloud sql which you have you must recall that you created the instance right and also it is going to get uh the instances list right so only those two things it is going to do and I can assign that to a service account. So th that is how the permissions are created. They are assigned okay, to either the individual user or to the service account. Now let me go back to the previous one what we were discussing. Okay, so if the I am policies or the I am rules clear to you? Yes, Jitendra. Okay, that's fine. So next, uh, next thing if you see, the, there are certain best practices that we should follow, right? So there is going to be a huge list of best practices. But on very high level, if you see, we should have the groups created. If you see there is a need for creating a group to better manage your permissions. Right. You can also ensure that whenever you are creating the service account, you don't let uh, everyone uh, access to the service account because that uh, can be very powerful because it uh, it is able to perform multiple tasks on your behalf uh, to their resources. Right. So uh, that we have to control and there are multiple others as well. Right. I'm not going to discuss much about that, but let's see what is a service account also a little more because that is very important concept. Okay. Now let's see what it is. So it's a non-human access. So a special type of account used by applications and services. Right? So applications or the services, they are going to be able to, uh, I mean, the service account is actually going to have certain credentials with uh, certain uh, IAM rules and permissions. With that, it is able to access the application or any of the resources or the services on the platform. Right? So that is how uh, it is mostly defined. So, I mean, uh, I would just say that just understand this is a machine id which can have the similar roles and permissions as you can but as it is a machine id it will uh, not require you to be present all the time to perform the task or integrate the multiple services together so that uh, they can uh, do certain tasks and uh, once the task is completed then they will uh, be uh, not in use otherwise okay fine Okay, so now uh, let's see what are the IAM conditions that uh, we can uh, give to it. Okay, so you can have a, so here, let's take it as an example. So I can have, uh, you can say the user group or user or the group which has uh, certain rules. Now, if they have a certain set of uh, 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 conditions met, then only they will have access to the resource. So this is another concept within cloud, I mean, the, the cloud IAM itself, okay, the IAM conditions. Uh, okay, so let me take this example instead of just simply giving you a theory here. So let's see. Just give me a second, let me open the console.
okay so here if you see uh, let me edit any of these uh, services or the service account or the im permissions do you see this im condition for any of the rules that whatever we assign to any user or the service account this is a service account right you can always see that it will have g service account uh, dot com as the uh, last node to identify whether it's a service account or not okay an individual i am i mean the individual service whenever you uh, start it will have a service account created for it that is what uh, what mostly i have observed okay okay now uh so you can see there can be additional conditions added so it is something like a common, uh, common command line or something is a term that we call here okay so we create a yes cel common expression language okay so with that we actually add additional conditions whenever we are working with the cloud iam so that uh, not only on high level but if i want to actually have even better granularity whenever i'm going to create any uh, i mean assign any permissions i should be able to perform that with the help of this uh, conditional office okay so now let's go back Okay, fine. So uh, that is all about the cloud IAM uh, authorization and authentication. The different conditions. What are roles? Permissions. What are service accounts? So next, what I was thinking. Uh, so so far we covered. Let's uh, move to this particular slide. So so far we covered this uh, uh, introduction to GCP security services, the cloud IAM, then uh, resource uh, manager as well. Okay. Now next we'll be talking about the cloud infrastructure security, data security, and we'll be also talking about the security command center. Okay. So these three topics. Uh, should we do it tomorrow or you want me to continue no jitendra we can continue tomorrow okay, okay. anyone else yeah continue tomorrow okay fine so let's continue from here uh, tomorrow and uh, and we'll see how we uh, move forward so i really want uh, didn't want to do uh, skip it the i am part at least okay even if it is taking a little extra that's completely fine but i am uh, should be very clear and this will not take much of time okay and security command center again is going to be a little uh, tricky i mean not tricky but uh, what we'll try to do is we will try to explore on the uh, dashboard itself how it looks like okay and uh, then later we'll uh, move with uh, uh, one or two labs uh, for the security side as, as well okay like uh, we can just see how the i am permission circuit and all so we'll plan out uh, what labs we are going to do on this but mostly uh, with this uh, set of theory also it should cover the understanding how it works on the uh, lab perspective also i mean on the very uh, very very high level on this foundation part okay fine so uh, let's uh, wrap it up for today and we'll continue uh, tomorrow again uh, at the same time um, and we'll continue with the cloud infrastructure security data security which is more of a uh, encryption and the security command center fine so yes uh, Let me stop the recording then.